This will be a response to Vernaculus, the Sinister Pumpkins video, Race Does Not Equal Culture. It's a pretty cool video. Uh, you'd think that this should be an argument about studies, right? Talking about all of the studies that he's read, and the problems with them, and what conclusions we can come to based on all of this empirical research that we've been doing. Well, you'd be wrong. Vernaculus likes to use logic and walk you through, cha walk you through chains of logic, and he likes to point out fallacies, right? Yeah, that's right. He's one of those people, right? He's a fallacies person, and he knows all the keyboard shortcuts about, about all the fallacies. Uh, but enough jibber-jabber, let's get into it. So, I've decided to put out a relatively short video discussing the talking point that race dictates culture, or at least highly influences culture from those who style themselves as white nationalists. Don't ever say I never went after the extreme right. Don't worry, I'm not going to call you racists, I'm not going to do any of that stuff, I'm just going to take your point about genetics and prove to you why it's utter crap. Oh shit, he's going to throw it down. He's going to wreck some the extreme right buttercreamers and do it without calling them racist. I am so excited about this. I'm going to skip ahead and I'm going to check out the sources he uses to get a preview of this incoming ownage. Wow, those are some pretty cool sources there. I'm going to try and fairly lay out what their position is and prove why they don't know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to genetics. <laughs> One of the common responses I get is that political ideology is highly heritable, which basically means that the variation within a population is very highly due to genes as opposed to environment. Okay. Even if we take that to be true, which hasn't been proven in the slightest. You know what's amazing about this? If you just did a Google search for the heritability of political views, you would get several pages that explain how you are extremely wrong. Not only are you wrong about this, but this is an issue that has been studied for decades with an aggregate sample size in the tens of thousands, all cumulatively tending towards a heritability of political views in the United States of about zero. Point five. Now, of course, the more you index it, the higher the heritabilities are. If you took a specific issue like the capital gains tax, the heritability of that on that specific issue would be lower. And no, what I'm saying here is not a viewpoint of the extreme right. This is a viewpoint of people who actually do primary research on this. Basically, they're saying that race highly influences your political ideology, and they do that on the basis of genetics, not environment, as if race is the cause of one's political ideology or culture. Now, I've argued with people who believe this stuff for a while now, and I've seen a few counters to my points that really don't do anything of substance to support their point. That point being that the genes that influence what race you are also influence your political ideology or culture. Well, nope. Yeah, now this is something that's difficult to respond to because it doesn't actually make much sense. Human populations are categorized by their genetic correlates, and you can categorize, or you can categorize them uh, phenotypically. You can even say things like biological race doesn't exist. And when people say that, like. Whatever, man. Like, you can still compare genetic clusters that constitute the races, even if you want to say that they don't exist. They don't exist, right? Now, when we say, for example, that black people are more likely to get sickle cell anemia, or we say that one race is on average taller than another race for genetic reasons, we're not saying that, you know, the genes that cause them to be black cause them to have sickle cell anemia. The genes that cause them to be black cause them to be taller than East Asian... Like, that's not how this works. Not for IQ, not for political views, not for height, not for anything. No, they can differ in traits for genetic reasons, and the genetic differences that cause those trait differences do not have to be the same genes that were used to categorize them into separate races in the first place, okay? To say that, like, for, for the races to differ in a trait, the difference has to be on those genes that are used to categorize them as different races in the first place, that's, that's literally something Vernaculus just made up. There's no... That's nowhere. That's nowhere in the literature. That's nowhere in the field. 
That's just a, a thing that Vernaculus literally just made up. If political ideology is highly heritable, then white people would be passing either liberal or conservative genes to their children. It's not restricted to race if it's highly heritable, it just means that parents pass it along to their children. What you would need to do to prove this, which all of these people fail to do, is that there is a connection between the genes that make up your race and the genes involved with your political ideology, even though they would need to prove the latter point, which they haven't done. Genes that affect one thing don't necessarily affect another thing just because you declare it to be so, while claiming to be experts in genetics. In an article by Sean Last that we have on the great website alternativehypothesis.org, he goes over not only population differences in individualism and collectivism, but associated genes for it. Sean says, quote, But enough theory. In the past several years, researchers have found that population differences in gene variants associated with increased social sensitivity, a key feature of collectivist culture, also predict population differences in individualism. Moreover, Gorodnicheko and Ronald confirmed that the more genetically distant a population is from the United Kingdom, the second most individualistic country in the world, the more collectivistic they tend to be. There is currently no way to estimate how much of the national differences in individualism is explained by genetics. However, the evidence we do have and basic evolutionary theory clearly suggests the answer is greater than zero. Close quote. Now, obviously the issue is far from settled, but Vernaculus's uh, imper imperious, imperious? imperious certainty that there are negligible genetically based population differences in political ideology or political tendency is totally inappropriate. There is no reason to be so certain as he is on this issue. If anything, what little evidence there is suggests that the extreme right that he is arguing with are more in the right than he is. If we look at Iran, the United States, and France, all of them are majority Caucasian, white, or whatever the whatever fucking word you want to use instead and yet have massively different cultures. If race influenced culture, you would think that all of these cultures would be pretty similar, and yet they aren't. Okay, first off, in many categorizations of race, or haplogroup, or population, or whatever, Iranians are considered a separate race from people in Europe. And there, are, there there's all sorts of categorization schemes, but more importantly, when you compare the native populations of France to the native populations of, of Iran, there's big aggregate genetic differences between those populations, regardless of whether you classify them as a separate race or not. Now, you can have a categorization scheme that, that lumps them together in a singular Caucasian race. That's fine. But just because you categorize it that way doesn't make those genetic differences between French and Iranians go away. And just because you classify Poles in French or Ukrainians and Germans in the same European race category doesn't make the genetic differences between Ukrainians and Germans go away. Okay? Um, but beyond that, the point that Vernaculus is making is just stupid. Right? I mean, sure, there is potential for, for geographic factors and their offshoots to massively impact political views. We don't believe the same things that we do you know, in the United States that we did in the year 1900, and yet the genetic differences between us and people in the year 1900 probably aren't that big, although they're not zero. I'll, maybe I can make another video about that. Um, you know, things can massively impact someone's political views within the United States itself, and the heritability of that is still around 0.5. Right. And the same thing, you know, you could say that, well, people in the United States in the year 1900, they were a lot shorter. OK, but what, what are you saying about the hair? Are you saying that the heritability of height today is low because we can point to, you know, European populations either in other countries or at other times that are shorter? No, that just means there's potential for environment to have a big impact. It doesn't mean. Right. And you could say the same thing about like individual persons who go on steroids. Like, look at how much you can ex increase muscle mass, or people who starve, look at how much you can decrease muscle mass through environmental, uh, profound environmental effects. Okay, but the heritability of muscle mass within the United States is still going to be pretty high because most people don't work out and most people aren't malnourished. Okay, so, I mean, we're talking about the proportion of variants explained by genetics. So, first, I mean, first off, comparing the 
like French and Iranians as if there's no as as if that difference cannot be down to genetics because they're genetically the same group is that's the one way it's stupid. But even if they were genetically like identical, it's still a stupid point. What about the genes that make someone Asian necessarily provides instructions for the invention of Buddhism? What about the genes that makes one black necessarily provides instructions for practicing voodoo? And last but certainly not least, what in the world about the genes that makes one any race necessarily provides instructions for what you believe politically? What a bizarre way of looking at an issue. When someone says East Asians are more collectivist and, that, and then they claim that it's probably down to genetic reasons, they may need to assemble some evidence for that point. But they don't have to also show how each specific teaching of Buddhism is caused by which gene or whatever it is you're saying here. For example, I mean, this is something that, that the MRAs can understand. If we were to say that men, for genetic reasons, are more likely to gravitate towards violent sports, would we then have to explain the genes that cause them to play um, football in particular, or rugby in particular, or cause some of them to do wrestling or boxing or mixed martial arts in, in particular. Demanding this level of specificity is retarded. Look, we can say that in a general sense, East Asians are more collectivist than Europeans, and that there are some genes associated with collectivism, which are validated as having the same associations within both, both Europeans and East Asians, right? They're within each population validated that way. And that they vary between the populations in the way you would expect. As for discounting culture, people make culture. Like, God does, doesn't just shit out cultures onto people, which is why when talking about group differences, I like to talk about the United States because you have, to some extent, a common culture, right? Or especially when it matters in terms of things like educational opportunities and nutrition, right? Like, everyone's literate, everyone goes to schools that are all basically the same. If you want to argue that, I, I'll argue that. If you, want to, if you want to push the myth of bad schools, quote-unquote, I'll, I'll, I'll argue that, okay? And, and we can get into the voucher studies, okay? Or nu nu nutrition, okay? Or, or the effects of parenting, like, uh, we can talk about that. But also, the kind of culture or race of people tend to create when they're completely in charge of a country, that's also relevant and that's also important, okay? You can say that East Asian collectivism in, in Japan is exaggerated by the culture there, okay, but that culture it's, itself is a product of the genetics of those people, and in a sense, you can say that the cultural differences that exaggerate genetic differences are themselves just a greater manifestation of those genetic differences in the first place. I actually disagreed with some of my current political positions when I was younger. Does this mean my genes changed? Does this now mean when I have kids they'll get my initial disposition? Or my propensity to believe one thing and then change it later through persuasion? Yeah, laugh till it hurts. You know what's really funny? Young white people tend to hold more of what we call liberal views, and then they move to hold more quote-unquote conservative views when they get older. Also, the heritability of all sorts of mental traits, including IQ, increases with age. The heritability of traits increases with age. This is known as gene amplification. Moreover, Vernaculus, your changes in political viewpoints, I'm guessing, went from what we would call left quote-unquote, to right, quote-unquote. Or, you know, you may not call right. I don't move to the right. I'm not right-winger. Right. Um, you would call realist and aware of feminists and, you know, this thing you call the regressive left, okay? With some hiccups, I'm sure, but, in that, but you've been moving in that general direction, right? That's an extremely common pattern. It's an almost universal story. And I'm not talking about specifically why you're a YouTube anti-SJW, right? When we talk about the, like, the heritability of religiosity, that, there's that. But the heritability of your specific religion, that's going to be down to, you know, what religion you've been exposed to, okay? I'm not talking about specifically why you're an anti-SJW. I'm just talking about the move from left to right. Why you're a YouTube anti-SJW, that specifically is going to be down to the specific articles, books, or documentaries you happen to be exposed to at, you know, formative periods, right? It's, it's, kind, of like, it's kind of like a roll of the dice, and, and that's where you came. Um, you know, when I'm talking about the heritability, I'm talking about broader things. I'm talking about, what, you know, moving from left to right, or individualism, collectivism, 
or you know when people study the heritability of religiosity they're just studying that the the specific religion you believe in that's down to what you were exposed to the heritable portion is how much you believe it okay now um i mean i haven't seen any studies on the heritability of political trajectory over a lifetime but it's rather cavalier of you to just write off your personal trajectory as purely down to environment and volition when it's such a common path, right? I mean, look at look at the subscriber count on your channel. Okay. Um, it's like saying, you know what it's like what you're saying here? It's like saying that the food you like it can't be a function of your genetics because you like different foods at 40 than you did at 20. Right? Or saying that political tendencies can't be a function of genetics because your politics have likewise changed in that same time span. You know, it's like saying, how can muscle mass be a function of genetics when it can change so much over a lifetime? Right? It's a really dumb sort of argument. Now, there is a ton of research on race differences in IQ and the heritability of those differences. And in the United States, the consensus is around... 0.5. Now, I think the real number is around 0.8, and I understand that this isn't a mainstream estimate, and I'd be willing to argue it, but for now, let's just use the mainstream number of 0.5, right? Now, vernaculus, this isn't the extreme right, okay? This is, right, this is mainstream stuff. This is mainstream intelligence research, okay? Now, to the extent that IQ, or whatever IQ is measuring, intelligence, maybe whatever that is, to you know, whatever it is IQ is measuring, it influences political views, right? And there's studies on that. IQ is associated with, with va variation in IQ is associated with variation in political views, right? If you have higher IQ, you tend to be more in favor of, for example, free markets, and you tend to be a social liberal. Well, there it is. There it is. We know that to some extent, group differences in IQ are down to genetic differences, okay? And we know that variation in IQ influences political views. We also know that the general heritability of political views is around 0.5, and we know that the races differ in genes to some extent, validated within populations, to be associated with individualism, okay? And also, we have, like, from an evolutionary standpoint, why do you think they would end up being the same on all of these traits that happen to go into political views when they're, when these races differ on basic... on ver like every other mental trait, from time preference to to propensity to violence, to, I mean, it's just bizarre, to individualism, collectivism. Let me read you something from Eric Turkheimer, entitled, The Three Laws of Behavioral Genetics and What They Mean. And in case you think Turkheimer is some genetic determinist hack, okay, this is the guy who did those, yeah, they're not infamous, because right, a lot of people would have to know about them, but within hereditary circles, they're kind of infamous, uh, the Caribbean orphanage studies that he did, what, and he has written several attacks on Russian as well. Okay, so this is not so. Don't you can't write this up, guy off as being the extreme right. Okay, now he writes, quote, first law: all human behavioral traits are heritable. Right, and heritable heritable means to some extent the variation in those traits is down to genetic variation. Right, as a result of the genetic variation continues. Second law. The effect of being raised in the same family is smaller than the effect of genes. Third law. A substantial portion of the variation in complex human behavioral traits is not accounted for by the effects of genes or family. Close quote. Okay, so the heritability of psychological traits in general is around 0.5. And lastly, the high heritability of political viewpoints is a more useful model than a total environmental view. Okay? This model explains what we see. If we proceed on the assumption that race differences in political views are 50% due to variation in genetics, then you know, we don't have any problems with this model. Like This explains what we see. Now, a totalistic environmental viewpoint that Vernaculus is pushing in kind of a bait-and-switch sort of way, sort of pretending that he's just criticizing... Uh, people, but then he goes on to make these positive claims that all viewpoints is, is environmentally determined. Um, you know, a totalistic environmental view has to explain why Mesoamericans are supportive of big governments and collectivist economics, both wherever and whenever they are. 
right? Now, a genetic explanation that populations just have genes and gene complexes that bias them towards individualism or collectivism, okay, is much simpler than coming up with a big historical arc that explains why every single country south of the United States is that way. There are no studies that directly deal with the question of race differences and the heritability of political views that I know of, so I can't tell you a specific number that you should think it is. But you starting, but like the starting default operational position should be 0.5, okay? Because that's what the heritability of psychological traits usually is, and that, and moreover, that starting assumption of 0.5, it minimizes your maximum error to, of course, 0.5, because because it could be the heritability could be one or the heritability could be zero. That's the maximum. But realistically, realistically, especially for a complex trait, um, it minimizes your maximum error to around 0.3. Okay, from because because for, for complex psychological traits, it always runs between 0.2 and 0.8, and it doesn't go much over or below that. So realistically, your maximum error is going to be around 0.3, and the average of that is going to be around 0.15. All I can really do is say that you should stop with this this really hard edge and totalistic environmental determinism as your starting assumption on everything. There's no reason for that to be your starting point, okay? Because that that just hasn't panned out in psychological traits in general on virtually anything. Um, I mean, if we were in the year 1800, if this was the year 1800, sure, maybe you could hold to some really wacky environmentalist environmental deterministic beliefs that they kind of had floating around back then. You can believe that, like, you know, your personality was entirely f a function of womb environment and, and how your parents raised you, and, th and by this way we can completely mold a new man, like Marx sort of thought, and, you know, and, and Lamarckian evolution, that, th that the traits of the next generation is actually impacted by the environmental factors of the parents, and, you know... Um, you know, but you can't. But you can't really believe that today. All psychological traits are heritable, and all gaps between groups are going to be heritable. Okay, it's just a question of how much.